It was his fourth race and we were full of hope. But there were a lot of expensive horses in the race. And they're off and running for the opening race this afternoon and back among friends who were... I was not particularly on board for a long time, so I wasn't expecting a lot. Back among friends, the leader by just the length to Dream Alliance on the inside. Carulad he was passing the horses as he went along the way, and, and the atmosphere was great. And I was starting to jump, and I could see Howard looking at me as if, gosh, you know, it's amazing to see Angela again so excited about something. As they took that one, Dream Alliance landed in front. Dream Alliance was a part of the stand side. I can remember just jumping up and down like a banshee and thinking, this horsey. He really is going to do something special. Good job by the leader, Dream Alliance. He's in real control here. And then Dream Alliance is so and so. Dream Alliance, oh my God. Come on, Dream. Come on, Dream. Come on, Dream. As Dream Alliance comes towards the last, pops it safely enough. And you knew, well, three quarters of a mile out, there was only going to be one winner. Dream Alliance, hard held from Prince Belisure, promising in second place. In the old village, they'd all be in the club watching. He fetched them back alive, sort of thing. I said, I'm so proud to be part of that. I said, that is my life at the moment, I said. Dream did it again straight away afterwards at Haydock. Um, just absolutely slaughtered the field. Although he wasn't blessed with speed, he did have that real streetwise looking for a scrap mental attitude to really get in there, get stuck in, and really keep fighting for every race he competes in. And we thought, oh, this is it now. We've mastered it. And the feeling that you've done it, you know, you've cracked it, you've actually bred something that can win on the race course. Well, the paddock is absolutely packed now. Let's see if we can find a few people. Nick Schofield here behind here is Rides My Will. Have a look around here, we've got the Dream Alliance team over here. We've heard a lot from Jan Vokes. I should think she's beside herself with worry right now. You all right? No, I'm very nervous. You're not going to watch, are you? No, I'm not okay. going to watch. So, Brian, you're going to have to tell her what's happening. Oh, yes, I'll tell her. Yeah? Okay, listen. I'm the newest wreck. <laughs> I bet you are. Tom O'Brien over there, he's going to keep the ride after riding the Welsh National. He rides Dream Alliance in the big race, and Philip and Sarah Hobbs there who trains. Let's go over here because. When you left school at 15, you imagined you were going to change the world, you were going to do this, you were going to do that. It was just unreal to see him and think, I bred him. When things got on her mind, you know, when she felt low, we'd jump in the car and we'd go to mine head and see the horse. And as soon as she, she was different, as soon as she'd seen that horse, she was different. He could read your moods. You always got a sense he was listening to you and he understood. It was like as if he was wrapping himself around you and giving you a hug. Your um, affection, love, grew with the time and it became stronger. I think it's the innocence. He doesn't ask for anything. And because he doesn't ask for anything and he's giving everything, that's the part that draws you into him. And then something happened. Dream went into the wilderness. To share of second place, in fact, definite second supreme selection. Dream Alliance has gone. Dream Alliance has gone. The favourite is on the deck when in front. And we'd have all the debriefs, and everything would be wrong with him. You know, I think he's got problems with his back. He's not seeming to jump properly. Or he didn't want to try 
It seemed from the moment I set him off that he wasn't interested, and we were all gutted. Dream? I don't know what it was with him. It was, it was like as if he was saying to you, well, I'll have you today. You think I'm going to win? Think on. I'm not. And then the banter in the village started. When's that donkey running next? When's Sicknort running next? So there was only one race left for him at that season, which was in Perth. I said to Brian, we are going. I don't care, win or lose, we're going. We'd been to every race. He looked absolutely stunning. Brian said he's going to win today. We phoned home, told him all at home, put your money on him. They didn't listen because he'd had a bad run. You know, they didn't put money on him. I said, come on now, dreamy boy. Don't let me down, you know, and his ears would prick and he knew, he knew my voice. And they are off and running for the richest race ever to be run at Perth. And it's Dream Alliance who's in front just about from Kerry Lads, who's in second place now. Iron Man on the inside, Lothian Falcon goes strongly, Morgan B. He had a mind of his own to dream. He was so quirky. When he was on form, he was good. He took some beating, but you couldn't always guarantee that the right dream was going to turn up on the day. He was a valley boy, see. <laughs> They jack the lads, didn't they, in the valleys, you know, these Welsh boys, you can't always trust them. And it's Dream Alliance who's clear by 10 or 12 maybe now from Lothian Falcon who's in second place. Dream Alliance wins it for the Alliance Partnership. And then all of a sudden it all went quiet and he was scratching their heads as if to say, where the bloody hell did he come from? Ah, he was all gobstruck. As if, well, he didn't expect him to uh, win it, didn't he? So Brian said, oh, I'll have to go and pick the winnings up. Well, you'd swear he'd won, you'd swear he'd won the lottery. He'd come running back. He said, I got £500. <laughs> like I said, some of them, I'd won thousands and he had £500. He was really chuffed. 